Hi, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Not For The Week Of Heart. Our video today is entitled, Should Christians Carve Pumpkins? Many Christians today have taken a stand against trick-or-treating. What I mean is this, they don't participate in Halloween by dressing up their children in ghosts and goblin costumes and then sending them out to collect candy, but they still carve pumpkins during the season because they say, well, after all, it's not for Halloween, it's for fall. So, is it an acceptable practice for Christians to carve and place jack-o'-lanterns in their homes or place them beside their doors or, or beside their windows? Well, let's get started by jumping right into the story of how the jack-o'-lantern got started in the first place. Apparently, the legend on how the jack-o'-lantern got started originated from an Irish myth about a man nicknamed Stingy Jack. One of the versions of the story goes something like this. The devil heard about Stingy Jack and one night he went looking for him to see if the stories he had heard were actually true. When Jack saw Satan, he realized that Satan had come to claim his unredeemed soul. So Jack asked for one final request from Satan before he took his soul to Hades. His request was to have one last drink of ale at the pub. Satan, seeing no reason why he shouldn't, took Jack to the local pub and gave him some drinks. To Satan's surprise, when the drinks were finished and it came time to pay, Jack had the audacity to ask Satan to pick up the tab. Jack, being the sly cheat that he was, talked Satan into turning himself into a silver coin so that they could rip off the pub. Impressed, Satan agreed. Jack then took Satan, who was now a silver coin, and he put him in his pocket right next to a silver crucifix, preventing Satan from changing back into his original form. Unable to change back, Satan had no choice but to agree to Jack's demands that he would not bother him for 10 years. Now when the 10 years were up, Satan went looking for Jack again. As Satan was preparing to take Jack to Hades, Jack asked for one more final request. He wanted one last apple to eat to satisfy his hunger before his eternal damnation. Once again, Satan obliged and he climbed up into apple tree to get Jack an apple. Jack then quickly carved the crucifix into the trunk of the tree, once again trapping Satan. Unable to go free, Satan once more had to agree to Jack's terms. This time, Satan had to agree that he would never be able to take Jack to Hades. Eventually, Jack died from alcoholism. As his soul was preparing to enter heaven through St. Peter's gates, God stopped him and would not let him in. Jack's deceit, his lies, his drunkenness, and his wickedness had finally caught up with him, and Jack was unable to enter heaven. So Jack was now without an eternal home. So he went to the gates of, of Hades, begging to enter in. But Satan refused and said he was honoring the promise he had made Jack all those many years ago. Now without a final resting place, Jack was doomed to ruin the earth, becoming a permanent citizen of the netherworld. Perplexed because he was stuck in utter darkness of the spirit realm, Jack asked Satan how he would be able to see where he was going as he had no light. So mockingly, Satan threw him a burning coal to light his way. Going back up to earth, Jack took a turnip, which was his favorite food, carved it, and then placed a burning coal inside of it. He began his eternal punishment to endlessly walk the earth, never finding a resting place. The once stingy Jack soon became known as Jack of the Lantern or Jack-o'-Lantern. People in, in Ireland and Scotland began to make their own versions of Jack's lanterns by carving scary faces into turnips or potatoes and placing them in windows or near doors to frighten away stingy Jack and other wandering evil spirits. In England, large beets are used. When immigrants from these countries came to America, they brought the jack-o'-lantern tradition with them. They soon found that pumpkins, though, a fruit native to America made the perfect jack-o'-lantern.
And that's the story of jack-o'-lantern. So we see that the origin of jack-o'-lantern has its roots in paganism and in the occult. The question posed then, I guess, would be, is it okay to participate in that, even if some say that it's not for that reason, but something else other than the original meaning that we're doing? What I mean is this, Christians will carve jack-o'-lanterns and place them in their homes, but they will say, it's not for Halloween, it's actually for fall. Is this an acceptable practice? Can you change a certain thing by redesignating its meaning? Well, God asks a question in Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. He asks, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? The obvious answer is no, an Ethiopian cannot change his skin, nor can a leopard change his spots. Likewise, you cannot change what a certain thing was dedicated for, as in the jack-o'-lantern. You cannot take what is evil in itself and then turn it good, just by saying it is no longer for that reason that we're doing it. Aaron tried to do the same thing, but it did not pan out for him as well as he had hoped. Let us read the account of that, found in Exodus chapter 32, verse 2 through 6. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hands and fashioned it with a graven stone and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. The people tried to, how should I say, depaganize the golden calf by declaring it to be sacred because they claimed it to be the gods who brought them up out of Egypt, O Israel. Aaron, the high priest, himself proclaimed that the next day, the morrow, would be a feast to the Lord. But guess what? God was not impressed and 3,000 of them died. They, they learned very quickly and at a very high price that they could not clean up what was evil just by giving it a new name and mixing it with what is holy. Jesus is the only one who's able to take what is old and make it new, to take what is evil or what is unclean and cleanse it by his own blood and make it clean. Someone might say, well, I understand that, but is it really the same thing? Is it really wrong for Christians to carve these seemingly harmless jack-o'-lanterns? Well, for one, it is the act of warding off evil spirits through another way other than Jesus. And Jesus said, if we enter through another door other than him, we are thieves and robbers. And that's, that is recorded in John chapter 10. Not only that, but listen to this in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. God said, War to those who put darkness for light. A jack-o'-lantern originated in the darkness. It came out of the darkness of the occult, thus making it evil. Now Christians want to dress it up and present this darkness as light. It's just like yoga. Yoga is a big thing in the church today. Christians dress up the occult and because they like it, they believe God must accept it because after all, they have cleaned it up. They use all sorts of excuses to do what their flesh desires. I read a story about a little boy whose parents were trying to curve his sweet tooth. They, they forbid him to eat sweets, except for when they give him some, obviously. So they came in one day and caught their son standing in front of the refrigerator with the door open and his hand inside the refrigerator. They said, aha, we caught you eating the sweets when you know that you are not allowed to. Their son responded, oh, I'm not eating. 
I'm just cool in my hand. And that is just like some Christians today. They use any excuse to get their way because they like it. They want to satisfy their flesh. They think it's fun. So they say, yes, it's from the darkness, but we have dedicated it to the light. It's no longer dark. Just like the Israelites did with the golden calf in the time of Aaron and Moses. So, after some consideration, I came to this conclusion. The bottom line is this. When you carve jack-o'-lanterns in your pumpkins, even if it's with things of the like, like scripture or maybe crosses or whatever you have, you are still participating in the ancient ritual of the occult practice of warding off evil spirits. And you are in every sense and in every manner participating in the occult, which is forbidden. So to summarize, whenever Christians carve pumpkins, they are in every way, every fashion, and in every sense participating in the occult practice of warding off evil spirits, amongst other things. They're put in darkness for light when they carve, say, scriptures in pumpkins instead of demonic faces, because it is still a jack-o'-lantern. The bottom line again is this, Christians should never participate in the seemingly harmless occult darkness that's originated these practices and they should never participate in whatever those practices may be, be it pumpkin carving or jack-o'-lantern carving or yoga, whatever, because it is really evil in the eyes of God. So I want to say thank you for watching. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button. And would you share this video? And subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. I'm Kenny Yates. This is not for the weak of heart. Be blessed and stay blessed.